All right, so Cap, man, I want to ask your opinion on this hot topic that's been, that has been going around all the news stations, especially the sports news stations. Uh, uh, we have a NBA superstar by the name of John Morant, and um, great, phenomenal player. He's from South Carolina. Uh, uh, he went to Murray State. Was a uh, all was an All American. Uh, 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 while he played in college, got drafted by the Memphis Grizzlies and became an NBA superstar. Now he has been taking a lot of heat lately because people are saying that. He's referring like he he wants to be a thug. He wants to be a street ninja. Uh, 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 I think at one point they were saying that he was hanging around the wrong crowd. Okay, they swept it on the rug. He keep playing. Uh, a video came out where he uh, shoved a minor. Uh, uh, I think he was 16, 17 years old. They kind of swept, they swept that on the rug. But then... This video came out where John Morant was at a club, which is cool. You go to the club as an NBA player, but while he was on IG. Not during the season. I disagree with that, but go ahead. All right, but while he was at the club, he was on IG Live, and then he started brandishing a firearm like he was a, a gangster rapper. And I think that was the straw that broke broke the camel's back. And now John Morant is on a it's on a it, I don't even think he has a time frame uh with the suspension that the NBA has gave him. You know what I'm saying? It's not so he he doesn't even have a date to come back and play. But I want your opinion on this, uh on far as on an NBA superstar that's trying to live the life as a street ninja. Hmm. Okay, as always, man, you know you done asked me seven different damn questions, man, in one. <laughs> oh, man, this dude. <laughs> this dude here, TV, man. Here we go. Okay, so my opinion, my personal opinion and my professional opinion, man, as a consumer who watches basketball and happens to like the game. So, and definitely from the streets once about a time. Man, it's like this, bro. First and foremost, I gotta watch my lingo and my language. But what the f freaking wrong with you cats who are making it out of something and turning it into something greater? What the freak is wrong with you dudes, man? I don't get it, homie. Try standing in the projects. Your mom and daddy ain't got no money. You don't got a daddy, matter of fact. You just got a mama. Your mama's struggling. She's working two jobs. She got seven kids. And your mama is a ground. I mean, she do it all. She the daddy and the mama. And she feed everybody in the household and make sure everybody got a roof over their head. They got clothes on their back. It's the best that she can, man. And there's nobody there to take care of her, though. So imagine being in the projects or just being in any poverty stricken situation and you turning that around for you and your family. Man, why the fuck would you turn around and go to some situation that's greater for you and you make it bad for yourself? So let's begin with that. It's a lot of young cats out here, man, that are very, very talented, just like this young cat is. Probably even better, because there's always someone that's going to come up in the ranking, you know what I mean, that's next up, that's going to break the record of what some other record was once about a time. It always has been that way and always will. You can't stay the champion for a lifetime. Like right now, Muhammad Ali is considered the greatest of all time to us. He's one of the GOATs when it comes to boxing. But he's not the only GOAT. We got Mike Tyson. We got Larry Holmes. We got George Foreman. You know what I'm saying? We got a variety of champions. So what that what that means is you can be replaced. So when you're offered a situation where your life can be altered to betterness, I don't understand these dudes, bro, why they constantly put themselves in threatened situations to be able to re-alter that to where it can take you back into the situation you once came from, man. I don't get it, Spliff. I don't get yeah, it. I don't, yeah, I don't get it either. You know? Uh, 
You know, it was, you know, you know, you know, what's crazy right now because not only has the NBA suspended him, but the I guess it happened in Colorado during uh, after a game with Denver. But the Colorado police is a, is investigating John Morant. So it so it's possible he could catch a charge off that IG live video. Okay, now see, what's my guy name, man? Uh, help me out. What's what's my guy name? He's a commentator, big commentator on YouTube, and he he covers these grounds. As a matter of fact, he did a video on it based on it. Uh, Which one? On on it's this Morant guy, but what's my boy name? Uh, this this speaks on a lot of the topics, man. To my. Uh, is he a sports? Is he a sports analyst? Yes. So my Stephen A. Smith. There we go, Stephen. Right. Stephen was telling a story, using this example of how he he had a partner. He knew he knew a cat that had a partner who was in a situation how he wouldn't bail them out. Right. Yeah. And basically, what that storyline was, it was showing the, the sense of loyalty. How here it is, two good friends. One friend is messing up. But before I let you mess it up for the both of us, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to set you up in this situation here, and boom, I got to separate myself now because I cannot allow you to tear this down what we built. So that's a great analogy to utilize for this situation. It's like, here it is, this young cat. You are representing the organization now. You represent the Grizzlies. You represent a state. You represent a city. You represent culture. So when you get out there and you do all the buffoonery and all the, the messing up that you do, you, it reflects all the people who's behind you, who got interest in you, who got investment behind you. It's a whole protocol situation going on with this now. It ain't about just you. That's why it's called team, T-E-A-M, not you, team. You're a part of a team now. So all that shit reflects the team. It's like any other player. If they go out and they get caught up or, or they get a drunk driver, DUI, and hit somebody by accident and get a vehicle, manslaughter, man, you bringing, you bringing heat on the team. You bringing turmoil. You bringing public scrutiny on the team now because that's how the people going to see it. They don't just see one person. They look at the team. So when they see him, they see the Grizzlies. It ain't just about him. They looking at the team because they recruited him. They paid for him. They got him there. And now we're expecting a championship from this kid. And you giving us the opposite? You coming in and acting like you a thug? Like you a gangbanger? You want to be nigga in the streets? Well, then you could have stayed there if you was ever really there. You could have stayed there. It's right there. That's not hard to do. You can, you can stay there. It's hard to get out of there, man. You feel me? Yeah. Now, now I think it's more disappointing, bro, because uh, you made it out of that environment. Exactly. And 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 you provide and you providing a different lifestyle for your for your family, which are, you know your mother, your father, your siblings, and whatnot. And you jeopardizing all this for an image. An image, bro. An image that don't even fit you. You got on your shoes. You know your size foot. You trying to stretch your foot into an extra, another yard that's not even your shoe. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Man, and then and then it, the gun, now force the gun situation, right? Now here you are. You may be taking on a gun, an actual gun charge case now because we don't know publicly, we don't know yet whether the gun was illegal or are you a licensed gun carrier, you know what I'm saying? Hopefully you a licensed gun carrier and it was your actual gun, but still out of stupidness, why did you brandish your gun outside in the club and acting like you a thug and all that, bro? No, you don't, you don't, you tuck and you only pull when it's time to use, man. You only, well, you only pull when it's time to defend yourself and that honor, bro. Other than that, you don't floss in front with the shit, man. Now, the, the, now with Colorado, Colorado is an open carry state. So the the charge that that he's looking at with Colorado is illegal in Colorado to possess a firearm while under the influence of alcohol. Mm. So they, that's the twist on it for him. Then. That, that's the twist in the club. The assumption that he was under influence and then brandished the firearm. Okay, but now still question question is on hand. 
was the firearm legal or illegal? Was it a licensed carry firearm for him? Is the question because this is an NBA player, right? Yeah. He don't, he don't actually live in Colorado, if I'm not mistaken. He don't play for Denver, so that means he was visiting. He was there out there chilling. So how the hell did he get the gun? Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, all these things are gonna be in question when it comes down to the investigation. You know what I mean? And I'm not trying to sit here and do their work for them, but that's exactly what they're gonna do. That's why they yeah. came back with another twist. So obviously, maybe, how about this? Just from a legal standpoint, and if I was speaking from an attorney standpoint right now, then comologically it would tell me, all right, since they charged him for under the influence with brandishing a gun, then maybe the gun is legal. Maybe he does have license to carry the gun. Or maybe he does have uh, a license permit to ha have a gun. And But it's not his actual gun. It's his buddy gun. Something is going on because they charged him. And what yeah. they did was they jumped from that charge to another. Remember when I used to, when I told you once about a time, I say in the Jewish district system, what they do is they hit you with what's called a, pro, a shotgun approach. If one don't get you, one will. So that's why when you start off, you go in and get booked for one particular charge. And then when you get to booking and you get your pink slip, and you start reading your pink slip, you be like, hey, hold on. Hey, deputy. Hey, man, let me holler somebody. Then he walk up to the gate. You say, hey, Rob, I got three charges here. I, they say I, I was only getting picked up for DUI. Well, I got two other extra charges. That's the extension that they give you from the shotgun approach. That if one don't get you, one will. So now you got three counts you got to beat. You ain't got one count you got to beat. You got to beat three counts, which is three charges, and all three carry a sentence, carries time behind it. You feel me? So yeah. Now, now he's in the position A1 where if they charge him, that's an that's attorney fee. And you ain't going to have no winky-dinky attorney. You got to go get the best because you're an NBA player and you don't want to do no time. The team can't afford for you to do no time. We in full flat season right now, nigga. We just spent a lot of money on you, Duke. You feel me? So it's like a lot is at stake, man. So I understand why the organization would feel the way they feel, why the bosses would feel the way they feel, because if I was his boss, I'd be furious. But see, I didn't come in here with a silver spoon already dealt for me. So when I first came in the game, I didn't have shit to lose. Because this wasn't my world in the first place. I come from a world of nothing to turn this into something. So with that being said, I got a lot to lose now, bro, because I built this shit by choice. Not by force, by choice. Just like that youngster didn't make it to the Grizzlies just because. That means he has somebody behind him, meaning parenting or parents. Yeah. Grandparents, some type of form of love was behind this kid to bring him to this level, bro. He would have never made it. Why would you blow that? That means you made it through grammar school, middle school, uh, 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 because y'all call it, we call it junior high, but they call it middle school, high school. Then you graduated with a certain GPA level where you can go to college. From college, graduated from college, got drafted, bro. That's not an easy damn task. That's not a task that's easy. You got a thousand individuals doing the same thing. Only five of them gonna make it out of that thousand. Every city is like this. So you, one out of them thousand that made it, why the hell would you go ass backwards, youngin? Why? It makes no damn sense. And I'll tell you why. That's because you really don't have the right individuals in your ear, it's OGs, or elders or people above you who really, really got your best true interest when it comes to so-called friends and that bond. Because those are the people that these niggas listen to. Those are the people they're around. The younger is, is, is just like a lot of other youngers who came up in the game, man, and then really, really, they wasn't prepared for all those millions of dollars like that, man, and had somebody who was really stable-minded, who it ain't even about the money for them, it's about my loyalty to this individual and to make sure he stays stable and stay on his path. So I mentor him the right, correct way I supposed to as a friend. Not the fact, oh, me and my nigga, my nigga that made it, so I made it. Oh, he gonna throw me whatever I need whenever I need it. All I gotta do is kiss ass and be a yes man. I don't want them kind of niggas around me, man. 
I never built my leadership around no shit like that, bro, in the first place. So this becomes a problem for cats who do get empowered and get in positions. It become a problem. You now, have I'm, in your ear. Now, I'm going to point out something you just said about 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 uh, John Morant's uh, uh, support system. Now, it's, it's ironic that you brought that up because his main support system is his father. Uh, his father actually uh, travels with John ja Morant. Oh man, that's even better. So okay, hold up. Let me give you the background on on John ja Morant's dad. John ja Morant's dad is T is T Morant. He played high school basketball with Ray Allen, the ten time NBA All Star. They are they both from South Carolina. Uh, 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 T Morant was a was a All State All State basketball player. Uh, he played overseas. Almost made it to the NBA. Mm -hmm. So, like most of uh, uh, former athletes, when they have kids, they put they put everything in their kids so they can they can live their dreams through that child. Right, right. All right. So, but but um, what makes it what makes it bad is that if the dad already knows what's at stake. Why? Where is the vice coming from? Where is the uh 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 the 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 the, the, the hey son put pull, pull him pull him to the side hey you is tripping you need to slow down or you you need to cut these friends off and you need to focus on basketball where is that advice why well the vice might be coming and it might be John Morant not listening yeah I was just gonna say it's it's two things huh it could be either or he didn't got to a situation now where he's feeling himself. And he's not taking the advice no more from dad. Dad doesn't have that control anymore that he once had when he trained him and he groomed him. See, when you're a kid, as I said, I have sons. And I remember when my kids, my kids right now today could have been over the top stars in, in the film world right now because they work all during the, 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 the kid stage when they was young adolescents. I stayed, have, it was getting booked all over the place. My phone stayed ringing. But then they got to a point where when they got into their teen stage, they decided they wanted to do something else, other things. They didn't want to do film no more. They didn't, my daughter didn't want to model. Uh, I put instruments in their hand. Both of them play instruments, flutes, uh, clarinets, and the drums. And so they just stopped everything from that perspective. But for me, it was like, damn, it was a dream that I didn't do none of this shit when I was young. I'm doing what I'm, I, I want to do now older that became my dream but it's so much i could have did as a young age that i wish i could have did it captured but my kids can do it so i got behind them a thousand percent because this is what they they told me they wanted to do it wasn't something i forced them to do i told them to do it they woke up one day you know seven eight years old told me daddy my son told me daddy i want to be an actor like you i want to do film my daughter said i want to do film too so i i put them on the right path they took off so the the point i'm making is then they got to a point where they made a decision because they got up in age now, where my coaching became, um, let's say, uh, a, a stage now where they can question it or they can question themselves and say, well, well daddy, you know, I decided I, I want to do this. I don't want to play ball no more. So now what am I to do as, as a coach and a father? Do I step down as a coach and, be, and still become a father to my kids? Or do I still play that coach role? So me, I never got caught up with the coaching role. I always been a father to my kids, despite whatever they want to do, I supported that. So that's where my coaching came at. And they want to do something else, okay, we go over to this. But whatever they did, I always just told them, be great at it, be at your best. Strive to be number one. Story, and see this, and, and, and on top of that, I have to use this other cat as a prime example, as how you can hit flat, rock ass bottom, man. Are you familiar with um, Keith Cross? He's play for the Clippers. Uh, listen to me. I know Keith personally. Used to claim groove. He's from the Hoovers. I know him personally, bro. I know him personally. When I tell you I know him, I'd have been around him. We done kicked it. Clubs, you see me in, in the public, stop me, flag me down. We holler, chop it up. I know Keith. 
Here's a cat that was in the NBA, he was hot as hell, representing LA. LA was proud. This, this niggas in the streets was proud. We really want to see this dude do his thing. Like my little homie, when he did his thing, man, Andre Miller represented the Nixon Guard and Hunt Ninth Street and represent LA. My little homie, Andre Miller, when he did his thing. Feel me? Yeah. Keith got recruited. So LA was kind of like really cheerful and want to see this dude do his thing, man. Keith can ball. Man, Keith did his thing all right. Keith became the most ignorant nigga in the NBA in history, if you ask me, man, when it came down to getting recruited all at once and getting fired all at once. Recruited, fired, shitting on the whole nine, man. I ain't ever seen nigga go from NBA to pissing on yourself in public. Pissing on yourself, nigga, literally in public. A drunk, I, hey, huh? Um. <laughs> hey, huh? Um. Yeah, I'm listening. I know damn well you not on this internet over there snoring on me again, man. Nah, nigga, ain't nobody snoring that. <laughs> what? <laughs> hey, TV man, he got that bad TV man. I'm over here steady talking. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you in that nigga truck, bro? Damn. <laughs> <man. laughs> Hey, hey, we gotta edit that out. <laughs> we gotta... not touch that. Uh, <laughs> hey, so uh, let me ask you this, Cap. What was the downfall though? Like, okay, so if if if, if Keith made it to the league, the Clippers, the the, the Clippers drafted him. What was the downfall? How did how did the downfall occur? A one, he didn't want to let the streets go. He figured he could keep the streets and be NBA now. He made an NBA and getting the NBA money. I could really be the streets. No, you can't. You got two choices, nigga. Either stay in the streets or go on up top, man, like you're going on your way, man. This the purpose of leaving this shit behind. See, niggas don't know how to leave this shit and leave it really behind, bro. You feel what I'm saying? You don't got nothing to prove to nobody, man. Once you make yourself in a situation in stages where it's good for you, keep doing what you're supposed to do that got you there, man. Why would you go yeah. backwards? So for Keith, Keith didn't want to put the rag down. And then not only that, now that I I'm, I'm, I'm made it, I still got my niggas in the street that's, that's really active. I'm trying to be active with them. Instead of them niggas telling me, like some of them was, homie, stay from around here, man. Take your ass on back to basketball camp or wherever you're supposed to be. Get from up around here, man. You know what it, what it is around here, cuz. Stay from yeah. around here. But instead, yeah. he kept going back. So he was trying to do both, bro, to the point where it got him caught up. Now, you smoking weed, you drinking, you smoking and drinking before you go to practice, nigga. Explain that. How you gonna, man, they ain't gonna wear your ass out on that court now. So now, once that start become noticeable, what the Clippers did was, they were smart. They organization said, okay, let us resolve the problem before it really get out of hand and become a problem problem for us, and it costs us really, really money. So they got rid of him, like they gonna do any other nigga. So this is what can happen to this youngster right here. Even though he's a superstar, bro, but before we let you tear this whole structured organization down or bring turmoil, we'll get rid of you. Facts. You feel me? Or somebody else gonna have to recruit him, recruit the problem. And chances are they will, cause it's business, it's an organization. But still, if you go over there and mess up, they gonna get rid of you. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So, what do you think? What is the uh, what is the validation that you think John Moran is seeking? Cause it, it has to be something. Like he's trying to seek some type of validation from some particular group. Okay. Isn't he originally from South Carolina? Yes. What the fuck is your validation, Dean? You 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 from South Carolina and you're trying to claim Crip? What is your validation and what and for what? Well, I, I I'm, the question is for me too. Why? What? You come from South Carolina, nigga. You come from the trenches of nothing to something. Why do you need to be validated? from a fucking ass gang, man. They don't give a shit about you. Don't love you, care nothing about you, man. Why? So, 
apparently he come up from a good upbringing in order for him to make it all the way to this point he had to good have a good upbringing and a great support system so why man why kid why would you get all the way up here and let some shit influence you well i tell you that go to show you how powerful gangs are i told you it was once about a time where i did this i did this doc series where i said gangs versus hip-hop which has the most influential impact over the world and over 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 kids and just over people in general right it used to be gangs had a powerful powerful impact because they flooded and ran the streets but because of hip-hop merged and hip-hop became so advanced and so big and it collaborated with with gangs in the streets it took over it totally took over so with the hip-hop being coincide with the streets it makes it cool it makes it commercial so you got all these kids thinking oh shit if i claim blood or i claim pyro or crip or this and that oh I, i'm validated no you not you not from this shit here we come from bro and you really don't want to be from it hell i wish i didn't have to go through it and, and and all the years I gave 30 years of my damn life, I wish I didn't give up 30 damn years. And here it is, you want to try to get in it? Man, it's a lot of cats, Crips and Bloods. They're the real dudes, man. Young dudes, old dudes, OG dudes, you name it. Man, I tell you in your face, man, you done lost your damn mind, bro, to think the streets gonna open arms and, and open you up and, 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 and welcome you into the streets. The streets don't give a shit about you, man. You made it to the NBA, man. What the freak is wrong with you? This is what common dudes would tell you. Man, I'm trying to get out of here, bro. I'm on SSI. I can't get it out of here. I can't make it out. I don't even know how to get out. You made it out, bro. This is what dudes would tell you who don't even know you, man, who's really stuck in this shit. Yeah. <laughs> we trying to get out, nigga. You talking about you want to get in and come over here. All right, well, give me your damn crown then, man. Here, take this damn backpack and give me your crown then, man. Come on over here then, man. You feel me? Yeah, you, you, I'm going to tell you, I think the confusion with a lot of people is John Morette didn't even come from, from that type of background. Like his his upbringing was, was, was very structured and very close-knit. So I think it's confusing a lot of people like, where did all this come from? You know what I'm saying? I just, uh, I just told you, it's the influence of hip-hop and gangs. The, there you go. Yeah, you said it right there. The influence of hip-hop and gangs. You said it right there. You know what I'm saying? So... Yeah. It's obviously somebody else on the team, or he got a cousin, or a relative, or somebody. The influence is coming from somewhere, bro. And that's where he's picking it up at. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know how when we was kids, your mom said, hey, where you pick that up? Where, where you get that from? You know how you might say something, you're like, boy, come here. Where you get that from? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What from, mama? No, who told you that? That's the influence. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, he's facts. Getting he's getting influenced from television, the media, the hype of it. You know what I mean? The music of it. The demonic drill drill of it. You know how our kids out here drilling everything. So it's like it's a major influence impact. Basketball players, most of the majority of the basketball players, what do they do when you see them on the court? They got, they got the in the ear. Yeah. They listen to music, shooting the ball. What kind of music they listen to? Nine top ten. Ain't none of them niggas down there listen to no jazz. Ain't none of them listen to some, <laughs> some harmony. Ain't none of them listen to some country. They listen to rap, bro. Even the white boys. Rap. Now, we're not talking about the old veterans or the seasoned veterans. It may be a little different. But all them youngins that's getting recruited these days, man, they all listen to rap. They all got their own certain theme songs. All of them. You feel me? Yeah. So you got to understand it's the influence, bro. It's the Pied Piper, man. It's the devil himself, bro, doing his shizits, man. Straight up. So, uh, Cap, I want to ask you. So if if it was any advice, hardcore advice, that you could give John ja Morant right now, if 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 you had an opportunity, opportunity to do that, what would you tell him? Oh, shit, man, listen. I sit him down, man. Face to face, the tank just like this here. Look here, young homie. You are the present and you are the future. 
You carry the torch that can pass the next torch down to the next youngin who came up like you and teach him the same way not to do the opposite shit where it'll make him fall. You carry the torch, bro. You know how many young kids is looking up to you from South Carolina right now and seeing you make it. You know how many kids is watching you right now and going, well, why he doing that or why he going backwards when that ain't even him? I I grew up with him. I know him personally. Man, Moran ain't no crib. You ain't never gang, man. Them are the voices you need to be hearing right now in your head. Reflect back to that, youngin. Get up off of this. What I can say also to this Mr. Moran is uh, I respect the youngsters for this. I respect the youngin with the fact that, and I know his PR and them told him to do this. But then again, it could have came from his heart and his father could have told him to do it as well. But I know for a fact his PR told him to do it because that's their job. He went on. Um, Go ahead, nigga. I'm right here. I thought the sound went out. He went on publicly to apologize to the public. He apologized to his parents, to his family, to the organization to his team, to his teammates. And on top of that, he said, man, just give me a little time. I'm going to take a couple of months off because that's the suspension they gave him. They did give him a time frame. He got a couple of months off, bro. He got he got to sit down a couple of games. So he's going to take that time out to go seek some help, some counseling. This is what came out of his own mouth. I could respect him for that. See, now that's a responsible youngin. That's how you can tell he got good parents and he got people in his corner because there's no way he would have came on here and aired all that out. Even if the PR told him, he could have sugarcoated and went around some of that stuff without saying all the stuff that he said significantly from his heart, bro, meaning that I'm going to go seek help. Wait a minute. He said seek help. So that means it was an overall issue and a problem with him then that the public didn't even know. That's great. That's great, young homie. Go get that help, man, and then get back on that court and go get your championship ring or at least make it to the playoffs for that city, man, and represent your city. Stop the bullshit and leave it alone, man. That's my advice, man. You're in a great position. You're in a position the kids dream of. And that dream ain't going to never come true, man. They dream of it. And they talented, but it ain't going to never come true because they're going to lack something. A1, I'll make and bounce this ball but I don't have the book smarts. Damn. So that means I gotta take a longer route or I gotta take a different route. I gotta get tutored. I gotta educate myself more to be able to advance myself in these books to be able to escalate. They ain't gonna just hire me in the NBA because I'm a great ass player, but I can't count to five. Them, them shit, that ain't gonna happen. You know what I'm talking about? Especially, yeah. especially now maybe, maybe back in the days, you can sneak and get away with it, but not in this era, in this time, because there's too many rules in these organizations. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, man, on that note, not just to him, man. And, 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 and let me say this, too, about Keith, since I brought Keith up as an example, because I use Keith as an example. And shout out to the homie Keith out there. Keith Cross, man. Keith, I give you your utmost respect and props, homie, because Keith is a great example also that this youngster can look at, man, and, and reflect on. When Keith was out here messing up and Keith got fired and got dropped from the Clippers and got dropped from the NBA and lost his contract and lost all that money and had to result back to the streets, God got a hold of him, man. God got a hold of him. The spirit got a hold of him in some form because if you look him up right now today, Keith Kloss is a drug counselor. The very same shit that tore him down, that made him hit rock bottom, He's teaching it now to others. You can do the same thing, youngin, but you ain't got to hit rock bottom. You can stay up on the top and tell other youngins that's coming up in the game that's getting recruited, man, that may go through them same experiences. You can stop them right now, man. You can be that new voice, bro. Shout out to Keith Cross, man, for making a change, a real true change in his life and real true growth, man. Keith is a known drug counselor right now, saving lives, bro, and trying to help others get off of the drug, man. That's my strong advice. This is double OG, man. You already know.